Okay, so I didn't necessarily know this before the day started, but today has turned into an eat a whole pack of bacon day. So that's what I intend to do. Oh, uh, there are five pieces here, and that's because I've already eaten six of them. And I was like, you know what? Just finish it off. It's still gonna fit within my macros. And I had plans for like making eggs and those sausage patties that I bought. But I had this bacon that was about to go bad and I was like, I'm gonna cook the bacon. And then after I cooked the bacon, I was like, okay, I'm gonna eat the bacon. So while I eat this, I really wanna like mukbang this for you guys and talk to you about what I've been seeing on the interwebs lately. Bacon. Oh. Oh. Do you hear that? <coughs> and I'm dead, okay. So like with my conference last week and having these lofty goals of like wanting to like stick to the plan and, and not go off plan and stay super keto and set, stay super DSK and then like getting there and like making it a full day and a half and then just completely falling off the wagon like part of me wishes I would have never given myself that goal to begin with. I mean, to be really honest, I really wish that I would have just said, this conference is once a year, you're out of town, eat with everyone else, don't isolate yourself, don't, you know, have to put yourself off in a corner, just eat, don't think about it. When you get back to your regular life, that's what you'll be doing. Okay, so by nature, I'm a compulsive eater and an obsessive eater. And before keto, the thought of, what am I gonna eat again? What am I gonna eat? How's it gonna taste? What am I gonna eat after that? Like food just consumed every thought and it just became very obsessive. And of course they were all unhealthy foods and things like that. And one of the things that I love about the keto diet is that it has freed me from that. I no longer have to constantly wonder what I'm gonna eat because I know the food I'm gonna eat next. I know that it's healthy for me. I know that it's gonna taste great and I know that I'll be satisfied. Well, at the conference, I noticed myself getting back into these obsessive behaviors, but about keto food because I would go to the conference, there'd be the buffet and I would, I would always have to be thinking, okay, what am I gonna eat? What am I gonna eat next? How am I gonna find keto snacks? How am I gonna find keto options? And, and I just didn't like that feeling. I didn't like the feeling of always having to wonder what I was gonna eat next. Whether that's thinking in, you know, with bad food or with keto food. It, it, it was the same mindset and it was the same feeling and I didn't like it. And that's why at the end of the second day, I was like, I don't, I don't want, I was mentally fatigued. I was like, I don't wanna keep thinking about this. I don't wanna keep obsessing over this. And I don't know if you wanna call that giving up or being lazy or whatever, but it just was not healthy for me. And it made more sense for me to just eat like I was gonna eat, take the pressure off, just do the best that you can. Don't overeat, don't binge, just eat like everyone else, with everyone else. And then when you get home, you can get right back on track. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because of the situation that I'm noticing with Kelly Keto. Um, her name's Kelly Foster on YouTube. She goes on Instagram by Kelly, K-E-L-L-I-E -E underscore Keto on Instagram. She's a huge account. Uh, if you don't follow her, I mean, I love her personality, but recently she's really been struggling with binge eating. Uh, she was a binge eater and with Keto, she has not been, but Recently, she's gotten back into these binges where she would just eat a lot of food and then she would hop on Instagram and tell us that she just binged and how disappointed she is in herself and how scared she is that she won't be able to stop and just how out of control she feels. And I used to feel like that and I feel so bad for her, but part of me you know, just wonders like, is she putting too much pressure on herself? And has she ever thought about, and this is, maybe it's an oxymoron, but like controlled binges? Uh, because that's what I do. Like I'm a binge eater and I, I get that. 
I ingest huge quantities of food all at the same time. Sometimes in secret, sometimes I let people know, uh, but what I've done is relegate those to my cheat days and have them like once every three months. And so when I go off the rails for a day, I go off the rails. Like I was, I was describing like there's a monster inside of me and that monster needs to binge and to try to, and to try to tell that monster, you're never going to binge again. You're dead. That's just not true. I just know that I would not be able to do that and it would overtake me and I would binge and I would feel so disappointed in myself, just like what, what's happening to Kelly. So to appease that monster, I keep it locked up 99% of the time. But you know, one day every three months, I'm like, I release the monster and it's like, well, just eat all the food you want until your stomach hurts and just sit down and don't do anything. And, and that's what I have to do to keep the balance because I feel like if I told myself to never binge again, similar to how I did at the conference, eating keto food, staying on plan, no matter what. And then two days later I go off and I just feel horrible. Whereas if I just control it when I can control it and then give it an outlet and appease it, then tuck it back away, you feel better about yourself. Sometimes, the way you feel about yourself after you've disappointed yourself is worse than what you did to disappoint yourself. So it's not about the binging that's bad, it's about how horrible and guilty you feel and how useless and worthless you feel. That's the truly bad part. Take that guilt out of binging, don't do it all the time, but find a way where you can still balance your everyday life with having to lose control a little bit. and and. And that's what I've done. And I'm really interested to hear, is that a cop out? Do you think that that is a cop out? And I mean, honestly, your opinion probably won't change my actions because I, this is what I need to do or else you can end up going off the rails. She binges every weekend, couple nights in a row for the past month. And that is scary. I would never want to do that. But I think being able to tell myself, you don't need to binge tonight. You don't need to binge tomorrow. If you truly want it in six weeks, there's a binge on the horizon and I can convince myself to stay on track. As, as long as I see the binge light at the end of the tunnel, I can stay on track. Whereas if, if the thought was that I was never going to be able to just stuff my face ever again, I might go out of control and I might just one day give up and say, I can't do this. I, I can't stick to these rules. And so, I build some slack into the rules. So I kind of just wanted to get your thought on like controlled binging or, you know, staged binging because I don't see myself never being able to do it again, but this way, at least it's a balance. It, it's a balance. And when you have that long-term mindset, one binge over the course of three months, over the course of a year, that is not going to undo your progress. But what will is this snowball of not knowing when and how you're going to get back on track. I think that's all of our biggest fear. Anyone who's lost weight, who, you know, used to be overweight and has lost weight, the biggest fear is like, I'm just going to give it all up and go right back to how I was. And we get so scared about that and binging, it will cause you to gain weight. And, and so not knowing how you're going to stop and how you're going to get back on track is so scary. And, and I hope she gets it together. I mean, she's going to go get professional help, but you know, part of me just wonders, is it just too much pressure? Like give yourself an out. Don't try to make it a year binge free. Try to make it a week binge free and binge. If, if you still need to binge at the end of the week, after that, try to go two weeks binge free. It, it, it's this whole concept that never, I couldn't do. So that's how I manage it. Uh, and I'm just interested to hear like, how do you manage, how do you manage binging? How do you manage cheat days or anything like that? Just because it, it's tough, the feeling of guilt and shame you have. And, and at the conference, when I decided, look, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm thinking about food too much. It's messing with the quality of my life. All the guilt was gone. All the shame was gone. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to eat. I'm going to eat. 
I will have some carbs. I'll try to limit the sugar, but I had some cookies. I'm, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. And there's no point in beating yourself up and wondering like, why can't I do anything? Why can't I just stick to a plan for a day? You know, like you can't do that. Like accept it and move on. And, and there's just a lot of self deprecation going on. You know, not the playful sort, like the, the serious questioning your worth. And like, I just feel so bad for her and that's how I avoid it, is with the controlled binges, the controlled overeating, because I know that that's what I need to do for myself. Telling myself never is not an option, so. Mm. I just wanted to run that by y'all. What are your thoughts on that?